Hey, what's up, guys? Um, oh, I'm I'm having a bad panic attack. Um, my therapist told me to do something, um, to ground myself, and so I guess we'll do an unboxing of an antique that I got on eBay. And if I sound a little bizarre, oh my god, even the sounds of my own voice is making me nervous right now. Um, she said to name five things that you see, hear, taste, smell, and can touch, or some shit like that. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, so. I see a yellow envelope. I smell nothing. Uh, I taste like stamp glue on my tongue right now. Um, my mouth is so dry. Uh, let's see. What can I feel? Bubble wrap. Yeah, bubble wrap. Okay. Um, what's the other thing? Oh, what you can see. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Didn't I say that? Did I say bubble wrap? I see bubble wrap. Well, let's see more things. Um... Yeah, oh my god, I'm having a bad panic attack. I was going to call whew, one of those crisis hotlines, but it's too embarrassing. I'm not trying to kill myself or anything. I actually don't want to kill myself. It's just these panic attacks are getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And it's just hard for anyone to understand. I have really no friends to call or anyone to talk to. My family is not home. And so, okay, we'll do this. All right, let's, whew, they say take deep breaths. Okay, not working. Not working. I just took like three Xanaxes. Hopefully that will kick in shortly. All right, maybe this will change the way I'm feeling. And hopefully it will. So this was uh, listed for $55. I offered the seller. By the way, by having diarrhea of the mouth and talking, it actually calms me down. So I'll tell you a little story about this. So it had a $55 buy it now. Um, I offered the seller $25 thinking there's no way in hell... She's going to take my offer at 25 and she did. And she took it. And all right, let's see what I got. Let's see what I got. What the hell is it? What the hell is it? Oh, okay. All right, this is really, really, I guess, pretty. And let's actually notice everything there is about it to try to, like, make this panic attack go away. Let's see. Let's see. So we got this lady portrait in the center. We have, oh God, this camera sucks. Hold on a second. All right, so I see little white pieces of enamel that look like little gems going around. I see blue enamel and, well, not real gold, of course. And then we get this uh, portrait of this woman in the center. Let's check her out. And she looks like one of those, well, she's wearing an Elizabethan. Oh, oh God, I'm going to get this wrong. All right, I can't breathe. Hold on. <sighs> Hold on, panic attack. Okay, uh, Eliz this is fucked up. I'm sorry, guys. Elizabethan collar, and she looks like a transvestite. I don't know. She has this poofy hair, poofy hair, and she looks sort of like resting bitch face, sort of like me right now, um, although I'm not a bitch. I'm just, like, really nervous that I'm going to die right now. And uh, why is this thing uh, so beautiful? I don't know, because it just is. And where was it made? Let's try to figure it out. I think it's Italian. Let's look for the the Italy, the Italy marking somewhere. Is it Italy? This looks like it's brass. It's definitely not gold. Okay, I don't see the Italy marking. Let's open this son of a bitch up and uh, see what's inside again. More of the grounding techniques that my therapist is trying to teach me. Do I listen? 90% of the times, no, I just pop a few Xanax. And no, I'm not a drug addict. Uh, but it does help. All right, all right. I'm starting to calm down. Maybe antiques actually calm me down or collectibles. I don't know. Maybe this is what I need in order to make these panic attacks go away. And you know what? I'm talking about it. Like, why can't we talk about mental health? Now, a lot of you probably don't have panic attacks. You don't understand uh, what the hell it's about. But they suck. They make you feel like you're dying. And I can't figure out how to open this fucking thing and I'm... Okay, I'm a moron. Yeah, panic attacks actually make your IQ go lower uh, temporarily. And uh, how the fuck do you open this shit? Uh, uh, I don't know. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm a total moron. Wait, the hinge is over here. There's two tabs. How the frig do you open this shit? All right, let's try this way. Oh, I think I got it. Oh, we got it. We got it. And I'm not going to show you what I look like. No, sirree. No, I'm a wreck. I'm a total wreck. And so we have a powder sifter right here, the original powder sifter. And why can't I get it out? Oh, okay. 
And that's what that looks like. Let's see. Do we have Italy? Italy written in here. Anyway. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got something over here. It looks like Greek fraternity letters. Does it say X? Oh, oh, it says X V. And I took a course in Roman numerology when I was a kid. X stands for 10. V stands for 5. So 15. Okay, that's all it says is 15. Really? Wait, hold on, hold on. Does it say Italy anywhere? I'm looking all around the mirror. I'm looking for the Italy. And I don't want you to look at me. I don't want you to look at this wreck of a human being that looks like the crazy cat lady from The Simpsons right now. Or someone that would be picking cans from the side of the road. And I do not see Italy. And uh, why? Why can't I see Italy? I isn't this supposed to be Italian? Oh my God, I'm really like, really like batting a thousand right now. X, V. X, V. Why would it have a 15 in here? I have no clue. Maybe this means that this is from an image from the 1500s? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. All right, so what are these basically? Um, these are Italian compacts. They're not old. They're not antique. They are... Actually, uh, they were generally made from the 1930s all the way through the 60s. They were sold in tourist shops in Florence, Italy, um, not too far from the Arno River, where um, actually I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly or incorrectly. Silversmiths would make these. And uh, the ones with uh, multiple portraits are, of course, worth the, mo uh, worth the most. And... Um, this particular one was probably made in the 50s or 60s. Not as valuable as the ones that have like the really, really cool 1700s, like romantic type of uh, like copies of paintings on them. This just being a, a regular lady's portrait. Don't know who the hell she is. Uh, but then again, um, this is still quite valuable in its own right. The other ones sell in the 350 to $975 price range. This one, I see selling in the 180 to $200 price range. Let's check out more and try to see the different ones on the internet so I can try to get over this panic attack and distract myself. That's another thing my therapist told me. When you're having a panic attack, do everything in your power to distract yourself, and it's starting to work. All right, so uh, you can see um, I'm trying to show you, like, uh, you know, ones that are similar. Now, the ones that go for big bucks are marked uh, Italy. And it would have like a silver amount in it, like 800 silver, 825, 9 something silver. Um, this does not have any of those markings at all. But here's another similar one. Here, let's hold these up together. And there we go. As you can see, it's very, very similar to, say, this one. But this one's in blue. What does something like this sell for? And look, we have our Elizabethan collar lady. Uh, and let's go on it. $299. I didn't know they would sell for so high. Um, it says vintage jewel compact with hand painted miniature portrait. Wow. All right. Where can I find the marking? Maybe I'm missing the marking. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, pretty much. It's like the same type of thing. And I'm trying to find the marking. I do not see it. And these ones uh, would have contained like a cake of powder in it. Yep. Has the same back as mine. Yep, pretty much the same thing. Wow, 299 doll hairs. I had no clue whatsoever. And uh, again, there's our portrait. And here is our portrait. I think my portrait's actually better than hers. Um, I don't know. Wait, hold on. Hold on here. Hold on. Yeah, this is actually really, really nicely done, actually. Oh, come on. Focus, damn you. Focus. Focus. Enhance. Enhance. Oh, okay. So the seller says, I find no maker's mark. It could be under the powder. I have dealt with these over the years, and most are marked Italy, and some are not marked. Aha. All right. So that's actually interesting. Very, very interesting. 299 doll hairs for one of these, and I got it for 25 doll hairs. Very, very good. But wait, there's more. And so we have more of these Italian compacts. And here's a white one that's similar to mine, um, except for we have a different portrait, as you can see here. 189 doll hairs, vintage Italian jeweled compact with hand-painted miniature portrait and puff. 
Now these puffs, these swans down puffs, actually did not originally come with the cases. These were purchased separately by the purchaser. Uh, I noticed uh, they would come with these sifters, you know, standard, but these swans downs, by the way, are very, very valuable. They don't make these goose feather puffs anymore. They call them swans down. But uh, there we go. There's another example of my compact. And yet here is another one. Vintage Italian jewel compact with hand-painted miniature portrait. Quite cool. Let's check out this one. 295 doll hairs. That's insane for a compact. Holy cow. And I guess I had a little artist signature next to the portrait. Maybe mine has one and I just didn't see it. And this one has rhinestones. And it came with a swan's down puff that somebody bought after the thought. And the powder sifter. Really interesting. And is this one marked? I don't see it. They have an arrow pointing somewhere. So I guess that means there's a marking on the side somewhere. So this seller sell says this one is in excellent vintage condition and it looks like it has never been used. It says these Italian compacts are collectible, very collectible, and are getting harder and harder to find. Hmm, that's good for the value of my piece. And here is another one being sold for 175 doll hairs. Wow, this one is actually quite beautiful. Look at the colors on this one. This one has an artist's uh, little portrait on probably a panel of celluloid or something like that made out of brass. And again, sadly, it's not silver. And some of them did have the marking in it that said Italy. Mine just says XV. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that means, but um, I guess we'll never know. They even made these in jars, and this one is a portrait miniature powder jar. And, uh, wow, that is actually quite pretty. And we have the little portrait in the center. 329 doll hairs. Damn, <laughs> that's insane. And this is just um, under four inches tall. Really, really interesting. And I don't see an artist signature on this portrait. Is it marked Italy anywhere in there? I don't see it. And no, but 329 doll hairs. It was 425. Now in her listing, she's showing other ones that's in her collection. And there's a really another nice one, followed by another one. So the synopsis of this video is, you have a panic attack, you try to work through it. If um, you need to distract yourself, make a video on YouTube and it actually helps. Well, besides the Xanax, I'm not going to lie. So to make a long story short, these ornately engraved silver, gold plated and brass compacts with like hand painted enamels showing portraits of noble women and pastoral scenes copied from original 18th and 19th century paintings are highly sought after. Um, they actually, although they're not real antiques, they are highly sought after and get good prices. So if you're thrifting, look for these, okay? So uh, most are marked Italy with the metal content. Some are not, as we can see in this example. Uh, the earliest were made in 1939, just before World War I. Around the time of World War I, precious metals and luxury items went out of favor. So these things disappeared and, sl and, and came back in a big way after World War II. Uh, the earlier pieces, the better. The later the pieces, not as good and not as collectible, although they are still collectible. Now, um, the earliest um, ones, like I said, were about 1939. Although some people will sell these and call these antiques, they're not. They were made in Florence by silversmiths. Um, they were tourist pieces and they were sold mostly in Florence. And you could also find them in Neiman Marcus and Saks Fifth Avenue department stores. They stopped being popular right around 1969. After that, these uh, really fancy ornate compacts really went out of favor. They were made by companies, Italian uh, silversmith and jewelers, such as Bellini, Falacci, Copini, Galletti, and elaborate ones with pastoral scenes sell in the $350 to $1,000 price range uh, in precious metals such as silver, 800 silver, 925, sil which is sterling silver, 
Um, the ones that are made out of brass are sold for or valued for less. The ones with a single portrait in the center are valued at less. But the ones with the pastoral scenes from the 18th century, 19th century, paintings made famous um, with pastoral and romantic scenes do sell for more. So I'm going to end this video by showing you a few that are in my collection. Again, the one with the pastoral scene is worth the most. You'll see that one along um, with my other one, which is a footed powder compact case with a little scene in it, followed by another one that's similar to this one and uh, followed by the most valuable, which will you'll see with bluish enamel and uh, silver or neatly scrolled designs. That one is valued at like 350 to 550. This one, if I was to sell it in my Etsy shop, I would not sell it for less than $180. And so you uh, got to see it. Thank you for watching. Sorry for the panic attack earlier. And I'm going to follow with photos right now and conclude this episode of Ghetto Antiques Roadshow, where sometimes you have a panic attack live on camera, but you get through it with the help of your viewers and friends. So long.